Bible Lessons from Joseph St. Dennis America in Prophecy Lesson 18 The Sin of Provocation In the previous studies we have discussed the mystery is our that will bring judgment and deliverance simultaneously upon Babylon the Great. On one hand, Babylon the Great experience a tremendous fiery judgment Revelation 14 verse 7, 17 verse 16 comma 18 verses 8 to 17, Isaiah 47 verses 9 to 15, on the other hand, God will open a wonderful deliverance, allowing the bride of Christ to supernaturally escape the judgment Revelation 3 verse 10, Luke 17 verse 32 First Thessalonians 4 verse 17, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 52. But what is the tipping point, or ultimate provocation, within our North American society that will guarantee the prophesied event? The Seven Churches. In the book of Revelation, Jesus discusses the seven types of believers, or seven churches in particular since each church group will have to overcome in the last days because Babylon the Great is the last kingdom to appear before the new world order begins Revelation 17 verses 4 and 23, Isaiah 47. We can easily surmise that the sins these believers have to overcome are abundantly practiced in Babylon. We know as well that when we consider the 42 descriptions we found in scripture so far concern Babylon the Great. United States of America is the only country in the history of the world who has met every one of those descriptions. 42 Description of Babylonian Culture Involves the Appearance of the Rainbow Flag We also determine that the progressive secular humanist agenda has not progressed our society forward, but instead has regressed us back to the example Sodom and the days of Noah that Jesus gave us and Luke 17. In our generation, those who deny the validity of scripture or fulfill in the very scriptures they themselves deny. Indeed, only a fool has said in his heart there is no God Psalm 14 verse 1. The bullying and militant hostility that the men asylum directed toward those refusing to participate in their lifestyle help tip the scale. According to history, this kind of violence toward others helps create a society right for God's judgment Genesis 19. Ezekiel 16 verse 49, Romans 1 verse 29. It is abundantly clear in scripture that God loves everyone. However, history has proven that not everyone loves God, wants his presence, or desires to have his commandments ruling over their lives. Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments John 14 verse 15. He knew when he first said these words to his disciples that we would break his commandments throughout our lives, so he will only choose to sacrifice himself in an order that we might have a way back to God. As John 8 verse 11 writes, he told a woman who was caught in adultery that she was forgiven, but he then told her to go and sin no more. All people, including believers, I struggle daily with accessing, However it is another thing altogether to embrace the lifestyle of sin, continually choose in sin without remorse or repentance, which will have dire eternal consequences. Some sins that fit in this category are listed in 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 and 10, most of these sins are based on how we treat others. But what is within the free will of man that releases God's judgment on some nations and not on others? Scripture traces a common thread throughout the ages that answers this question. To find that thread we must go back to ancient history and study those who knew God and his ways better than any other people on earth, those in the nation of Israel. Lessons from History God established his covenant with Abraham so that his descendants would act as ambassadors for God's kingdom to establish his will on earth. This did not make the Jewish people superior to other nations, Instead, it gave them more responsibility than any other ancient society. They would have to worship God in a very specific way, living a lifestyle that differed radically from that of other nations. It would be a lifestyle dedicated to honoring the Most High God and showcasing His love to humanity. Following God's covenant men Israel would have to establish godly morals and godly morals and godly ethics, and that their lives will no longer be their own. Exodus 19 verse 5 Now therefore, if you will be my voice indeed, 
and keep my covenant, then he shall be a particular treasure unto me above all people for all the earth is mine. Deuteronomy 14 verse 2 For thou art and holy people until the Lord thy God, and the Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a particular people until himself above all nations that are upon the earth. The word particular in this instance means treasured possession or personal property. Is it any wonder that God told Moses in the very first the Ten Commandments that they were to have no other gods before him for he is a jealous God Exodus 20 verse 5? The Hebrew word for jealous in this passage is Ghana. It is used several times in the Hebrew text, and it means something quite different from today's negative interpretation of jealousy. It is like a loving husband who wants no one flirting with his wife. The Jewish people are so beloved that they are literally the apple of God's eye as a prophet Zechariah states. For he who touches you touches the apple of his eye Zechariah 2 verse 8 ESV. Of the Ten Commandments given to Israel, the first four deal with how the Jews were to embrace their relationship with God, the Lassics with all the Jews were to embrace each other. In other words 60% of the Ten Commandments were social morals that regulated conduct for joy society as a whole history shows that the Jewish people fell away from their covenant with God, bringing in dire consequences. God will raise up pagination to judge or purchase chosen people. Yea after a certain amount of time, once repentance was established, God always delivered them from their oppressors and brought them back into covenant with himself. Without any regard for God's commandments, Joseph Levin brothers sold him into slavery. Years later their descendants also found themselves in the bonds of slavery. Once their time and judgment was over, however, Moses was raised up to deliver them. Over the course of that deliverance, guided to Egypt exactly what Egypt had done to the Jews. The ten plagues or judgments that came upon Egypt or the direct result of Pharaoh's treatment of the Jews. During Israel's years in captivity, Pharaoh's birth control policy was to drown Hebrews male children in an isle as a form of sacrifice to the Egyptian god of the Nile. In 603 BC Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, I decided to throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into a burning furnace. These three faithful Jews were unwilling to break the first commandment in bowing down to connoisseur's image. Yet it was only the Babylonian guards who died from the intensity of the flames meant for the young Jewish boys Daniel 3 verse 22. The Babylonians had no idea they were touching the apple of God's eye. In 500 BC the Persian bureaucrat Haman had a fit of demonic rage when Mordecai refused to bow to him. Haman, build a gallows to hang this Jewish worshipper. However, Queen Esther brought word to the Persian king, resulting in Haman and his whole family being hung on the very gallows they built to exterminate the Jews Esther 7 verses 9 and 10. In 1944 AD during World War II, the demonized maniac Adolf Hitler decided to eradicate God's chosen people. He gassed them, shot them, and burned him in the death camps of Europe. When the war was finally over, Hitler voluntarily bit down on the cyanide gas capsule, shot himself in the head, and had one of his loyal Nazi henchmen burn his body in a futile attempt to destroy the evidence. The same demonic spirits of anti-Semitism eventually did to Hitler exactly what they told him to do to the Jews. Modern History it has only been 70 years since insanity of Nazi Germany and extreme anti-Semitism that was showcased in World War II. Yet today, the spirit of hate and rage is still showcased all over the world, rockets are launched toward Israel monthly, protesters promote boycott, the vest, and sanction BDS action against Israel on streets and campuses, nations even United States and one voice that Israel is an apartheid nation. The world's population of Jews by birth is approximately 14 million. However, new breed of Jews has entered the world through the blood but sacrifice of Jesus Christ, not by physical birth and circumcision of the flesh, but through spiritual circumcision of the heart Romans 2 verse 29, the rebirthing of their spirits John 4 verse 22, and renewing of their minds Romans 15 verse 27 
ambassadors of God's spiritual kingdom no longer have to enter into the spiritual protocol by physical birth. They can enter simply by knowledge in the truth of who Jesus is and why he came. This also entails a new interpretation of who the apple of God's eyes is today. It is still the Jewish people, but is also those will become Jews by sect in the kingship of the most famous Jew who ever lived, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But what does this have to do with North America and, specifically, the United States of America? How are the spiritual principles affecting us within our society today? Although the way of becoming a Jew has changed, the covenant of God watching over his people has not. Those who have decided that they want one nation under God in their personal lives and government structures are becoming a minority in our nation. There seems to be an open hostility directed toward those who want to preserve the traditional values laid out by the American founding fathers, a hostility from those who think it's time to walk away from those values and create a whole new world without God or his commandments. The spiritual law of judge not lest ye be judged, Matthew 7 verse 1, simile is of no concern to the new group progressive group thing. They preach inclusiveness, but only as long as it agrees with her worldview. This group deems biblical lessons from the past to be mere fairy tales. They want the government to be God, they will, of course, create this government based on their values which oppose traditional scriptural and moral Judeo-Christian values to those who study Bible prophecy. This comes as no surprise. God said it would happen in, through the free will of mankind, God watches over his word to perform it. Just as it was in the days of Sodom and then the days of Noah, today's news media broadcast the signs Jesus told us to look for pointing to his eminent return Luke 17. Canada recently proposed legislation to amend the criminal code in order to ban the practice of conversion therapy and legislate potential penalties of up to five years in jail. If passed this legislation would prohibit speech that dissuades anyone, including children, from adopting the gender orientation that they choose to embrace. In addition, it would possibly restrict counsel warning against sexual activity outside the scriptural boundaries of holy matrimony between a man and woman. If such a bill's passed in the future, will it be in the clergy, counselors, or even parents may go to jail for even suggesting that engaging in sexual relations outside of holy matrimony is a sin and should be avoided? What, then, does this have to do with Bible prophecy? History records that when governments such as Pharaoh of Egypt, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, Hermann of Persia, or Adolf Hitler of Germany implemented regulations criminalizing or judging God's people, restricting them from practicing his laws, it provoked God's judgment. It was like poking God in his eye. That's all for today. I will divide the rest of this lesson into two sections. Judge not lest ye be judged and God's response to the shedding of innocent blood. Be blessed and be safe my brothers and sisters.